Teresa, you've had the joy of working with Coleman Barks and you understand the, the role and the debate of translation in the modern world. How, do you, would, you, how would you characterize Coleman's translations and his contribution? I want to say from Rumi himself, um, what, how he thinks that he can be understood. Because when we talk about translation, we, we almost want to know who the person who said all these beautiful poetry that we are trying to translate is. And Rumi says, Ayene'am, Ayene'am. Marde magalat niya. Ayene means mirror. He says, I'm a mirror. I'm a mirror. I'm not the man in the scripts or within the written articles. So then take that and imagine a person like Coleman Barks sitting down with such rich material. I interviewed him and I asked him, what is it? Are you, do you have to put yourself in some state to be able to achieve it? Well, that's what I love about the work with Rumi is that uh, something is just happening. I, I just got to get out of the way, you know. And when I, I, I work on the poem and, uh, and it's really going well, I, I do finish the 30 minutes and then I just bow. I just, something in me wants to bow. Like, thank you. you know? When you are with everyone but me, you're with no one. When you are with no one but me, you're with everyone. Instead of being so bound up with everyone, be everyone. When you become that many, you are nothing, empty. So Rumi again says if and in Sonic comment, if a complete human being touches ash, it turns into gold. If an incomplete one takes gold, it turns into ash. So it is very important that the English speaking world through the translation of valuable people like Coleman Barks and Andrew Harvey have access to this. But readers should also always keep in mind that right now you're speaking to Andrew and Rumi, Coleman and Rumi. And there's nothing wrong with that, but we need to know that. That's very helpful.